Hey, this Ramon channel is Alpha 4. There's going to be more questions for Christians, Muslims, Jewish, Hindus, Buddhist, Taoist, Sheikhs, Zoroastrians, and Shintoist. As there was some confusion among my respondents to my last questions for video, I thought it best to err on the side of too wordy instead of terseness. These questions were inspired by the answers to my more questions for atheist, skeptics, and cynics video. It's a lot of words I just said. So there's a cat over here who wants my attention. So if I'm distracted, sorry about that. All right. Question number one. Do we, as believers, have an obligation to be unbiased or to present our faith in an unbiased manner to non-believers and disbelievers? Question number two. Do you find it patronizing or insulting when atheists assume you don't know the evidence for their claims, or that somehow you could only believe the things you believe out of ignorance? Do you think both sides should only speak to each other on the highest level, or would that be more unproductive than as we do now, where both sides tend to just assume that the other side hasn't heard or hasn't un or doesn't understand the case and evidence from the proponent's point of view. Question number three. Do you have evidence for your beliefs other than argumentation? Would any argument or rhetoric on its own be enough to convince you that something you consider hypothetical to be either true or untrue. Is just couching faith in this type of language insulting or offensive to you? Question number four. Do you consider your sacred text, plural, any collection or compilation of sacred texts to be a single source or many? Do you feel the same way about textbooks, which can have many authors and contributors to one volume or edition. Why or why not? Question number five. How do you answer to the demonstrable fact that there are older religions than your own? Do you think that the mere fact that other religions, systems of faith, and denominations exist other than your own, with their own exclusive truth claims, diminishes or discredits your belief or beliefs? Question number six. Given the traditional three B's of religion, that is belief, behavior, and belonging, or ideology, ritual, and community, do you think atheism as it exists today in this world should be classified as a religion? Or do we need the other tenets of qualification YouTube skeptics put on religion? That is documents, doctrine, dogma, and leadership, or structure. And even with these addendums, do you think atheism qualifies as a religion? Question number seven. Are you aware that there are different types of atheism? Which schools of philosophical atheism are you familiar with, or have you read, if any? Were any of those philosophies tempting to adopt? Why or why not, and which ones? Also, how old were you when you were introduced to those ideas, and how long ago was that for you? And I guess another good follow-up would be, have you re-examined those ideas or revisited those ideas since rejecting them, if you did reject them? Question number eight. How do you handle extraordinary claims about historical figures other than those in your scriptures? such as those of Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great, about their divine lineage or any miracles they are said to have done. Question number nine. What convinced you that your religion or faith was correct and true? What made you believe? Could anything demonstrable, material in the practical, physical, testable, repeatable sense, make you not believe in the metaphysical, nor the mystical. And on a similar note, can any rhetorical argument get you to move away or against your current faith? 
Question number 10. Do you find it hypocritical that atheists and skeptics claim not to be a group or to not have beliefs about God? In other words, do you consider non-belief to be a belief? Is there a difference for you between simply not believing versus arguing for not believing? Does advocating disbelief, doubt, cynicism, or skepticism change the category and standing of an atheist in your mind? Would you consider their attempts to deconvert others an act of apologetics and proselytizing? There's more there, but I'm going to keep it at that point. Question number 11. Do you consider yourself conservative, centrist, or liberal? Question 12. What do we think of each other? What are your opinions of each of the other eight major religions of the world? Question number 13. What do we think about the other and opposing sects and denominations within our own religion? Should we consider heretical and blasphemous groups that use our same moniker, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, etc., as belonging to our in-group, simply because they say they do? Or do we get to decide how we define ourselves, and thus who is and is not one of us? Question number 14. Given that there are different types of atheism, should we be less general when we are addressing atheist as a whole? Even if we are presenting the same information, should we address naturalist, humanist, etc. individually or separately? Do you think we are being hypocritical when we ask atheists to do the same for us? As many YouTube atheists like to target the low-hanging fruit that is individuals with crazy heretical beliefs and say, here, look at the religious person. This is what they all believe. This is what religion and those texts over there leads to. Are we not doing the same to atheists when we lump them all into one single non-believer group? And finally, question number 15. Not speaking of your high school friend you still have drinks with, on the weekend, nor your cousin you catch up with once a year during the holidays. But how would you describe a YouTube atheist or YouTube skeptic as opposed to a normal atheist you'd have a conversation with during a normal day? Do you think they are part of a community or a group that is the YouTube atheist? Do they, YouTube atheists, represent normal atheistic beliefs that you encounter during your day when you do encounter them? Do you think that there is a distinction between belief and non-belief? That is, between beliefs and non-beliefs. Do you think that there is a distinction? Do you, like they, think that there is a distinction between beliefs and non-beliefs? And is this distinction reasonable, valid, or sound? They took it that atheists, skeptics, and cynics were all the same thing, which they can be, but they don't have to be, and that they overgeneralized and overliteralized the, the address and title of the video, which was actually quite frustrating in trying to uh, comb through their answers. So, I'm being a little... Uh, over diligent with my titling this time. Uh, anyway, please comment down below. Please make a video response if you can. Please link it down below. Uh, I really want to hear what you all have to say. Uh, hope you have a great day. This is a dialogue that's going on between atheists and religious people. I had a initial video a year ago that I did for the atheist and then I followed that up with a questions for series to multiple groups. Uh, here on this time, this is more directly between the atheist and the believers. Um, the atheist here have already had a follow-up video. Uh, this now is going to be the video that's responding to their answers. These are questions and responses they gave to me based on the questions I gave them. 
So this will be a response. This video is a response to them as well as questions for you all. How you answer, I will then reply with a response video to you and hopefully get some atheist or atheistic and skeptic viewpoints when I present my results to you, uh, hopefully later this month. Please like and subscribe. Talk to you all later. Please share this video. I want a lot of answers. I want to see a lot of comments on this one.